Euro 2040 continues today as we enter the first of the knockout rounds and we're up against a familiar foe as we take on Turkey who just happened to have the current top scorer in the competition and one of the world's finest players, Tottenham attacking midfielder Oscar. We need to figure out how to handle him. Hello and welcome to part three of the international portion of the Expedition of Gold. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode, at the very least, we're playing Turkey in the first knockout round of the Euros. As with yesterday's episode, I can't show you any of the other screens because I have got my new club management job in place and I don't want to spoil who it is until I'm ready to tell you who it is. So you'll find out what club we're managing next and in which country we're going to be managing after we're finished with the Euros or whatever point that is. So it might be today, it might be in a couple of days' time. If we beat Turkey, we will show you, I think the quarterfinals comes next. That will be the next game on today's episode. So there's a chance for two games. I hope we get two games. But we need to get straight into today's game. Um, we are going to be without Carl Colwell, our captain. He's suspended. Interestingly, Turkey playing Oscar out on the left wing. That seems like an unusual decision. I'd absolutely have him in the hole just there. But I'm certainly not going to argue with them playing him out of position and giving him a silly squad number with the number 15. So our team, we've got Hunter in goal. A back four of Carter, Abraham, Thompson and Rents, who's in for the suspended Colwell. Then we've got Sue, Breaker and Burgess in midfield. I still search for my best midfield three. And then our established front three of Asai in behind Lewis Phillip and Liam Wells. Oh, we've got to win this game. It's Oscar against Wells. Two of the best players in the world. Two of the best players I've ever had in Football Manager. And they're certainly two of the best players in this particular save. And they are coming up against each other on the top stage. And Liam Wells has just scored after less than a minute. He's enjoyed that build-up. He's ready to prove that he's better than Oscar. Interestingly, on media reports now, because he's been playing out on the wing for the last two seasons for Tottenham, he is described in exactly the same way as Oscar. He's world-class attacking midfielder Liam Wells. Now, we all know Liam Wells is a striker. He's not an attacking midfielder, and Tottenham are ruining him. But... He's certainly going to be playing as a striker for England throughout the Euros for as long as we're in it. And fingers crossed, we can win the whole thing. He can finish as top scorer and we can forget this attacking midfielder nonsense and we can realise that he is arguably, I would say he's better than Ira Barron at this point. Looking at how Ira Barron has played for Spurs for the last two years. He's 27 now, so he's three years older than Wells. He's only scoring at like 15, 20 goals a season now because he's playing up front on his own in a system that doesn't really suit him, I think Wells is better because he's scoring that many goals from the wing. And it's now 1-1. Oscar's not involved in it either. So because of the way Football Manager works, it is guaranteed Oscar's going to get a goal today. So we need, we've need we got a little bit of work to do if we're going to make it through to the next round because we're effectively 2-1 down at this point, according to Kev Logic. Wells, I think I think both Wells and Thompson are now going to be suspended for the next game with the yellow cards that they've just picked up. But Kieran Thompson, almost got a hero's name, gets a, a really important goal just before half time. We're two one up going into half time, and we, are, we do have a potential worry at centre back if we make it through because Thompson we missed him massively against Scotland in the first game when we had to play the youngster Mori at centre back. Might have to have a rethink if we do make it through today's game about who comes in to play instead of Thompson in that back four because I don't know that Mori is the man. Still never played a Premier League game. Still very young and he can play anywhere on the pitch. So just because he can play anywhere doesn't mean we should necessarily be sticking him in at centre-back in a major international tournament. Oscar, there you go. It's the first time we've seen Oscar today, really, and he is going to be eager to impress in the same way Liam Wells is. See who plays it over the top for Wells, and that's just pitiful. Liam Wells, what were you thinking? You had the opportunity to put us 3-1 up and basically put this game to bed. As it is, it's still very much an open game. Turkey have had slightly the better of the possession, but we've had the better chances. Wells is in again here. What can he do? Find Sue Lewis Phillip, and he should have scored. That's our third clear-cut chance, and we're in very real danger of squandering this period of the game where we are in complete control 
and letting turkey in as we start to tire because our conditioning is woeful. Um, usual substitution. Um, Cook Simmons is going to come on to play in behind the front two. I might even start him there at some point. Roger Rents, um, not really an international player, I don't think. We'll give Simon Clifton a go at right back. Rents just not playing particularly well. Um, we are going to need Colwell back for the next game if we make it that far. We need to keep an eye on some of these fitness levels in midfield. James Burgess is struggling again. He's our captain today, though. We don't want to, don't really want to take the captain off in a really important game. I think he's just going to have to be a bit tired what we will do though is take off philip and bring on fraser clay we made this substitution in the last group game and clay did come on and grab a goal so hopefully he can do the same for us again today i am thinking in terms of maybe dropping down to a slightly less attacking system but i'm terrified to do it because i know our defense isn't very good our strength is definitely going forward and in the same way as my early tottenham team and some of the other teams we've had in this save I'm not really comfortable defending, but it's cost me because we've carried on attacking and it's now 2 all. Uh, and we've taken off one of our strikers as well. Admittedly, we've, we have got another one on and we do have the ability to switch to a 4-3-3 at this point because both Cook Simmons and the other guy, Clay, is that his name? They're both really wingers who I'm playing out of position. So if we do go into extra time, it might be an idea to slip into a 4-3-3 just to get everyone into their more comfortable positions. James Burgess is really struggling at this point. I'm going to regret not taking him off if we go to go into extra time because we're just going to break him. And he's so important, arguably our best player. And he's all, I mean, he's shattered. Mm. We've got players who've run close to 10 miles in today's game. Samuel Sear is nearly in his 50s. And he's run almost 10 miles today. There's no way these players are going to be 100% going into this extra time. Well, for the first time, I think my plan is carry on as we are. There you go. There's a Kev plan for you. If we do go ahead, we're going to drop down to counter-attacking on a 4-3-3. And I know you always tell me 4-3-3 isn't a defensive system in Kev's head. It's a defensive system. It only has one striker. That's about as defensive as you can get in my world. Um, I don't want to go to penalties. Penalties terrify me. Should we mix things up for this second period? I mean, this is a massive, massive risk. Can anyone play deeper? Not really. No. So we'll do a flat midfield three. But with wider players, we'll take off this play fairly narrow thing just do balanced width oh i know i'm gonna regret doing that but we've got to try something and it seems they've moved oscar into the middle but in the middle of a midfield three so they're they're going for penalties at this point they've dropped a sweeper in they've gone far more defensively than they started the game so I guess it makes sense if they are playing with a sweeper and a very much a back three with Oscar as the deepest man right now to try and get our attacking players into their best positions and Liam Wales is in. What a massive goal that could turn out to be. It's his 30th goal to Eng for England and with 10 minutes to go in extra time, we are ahead again in the game and it's a terrible defensive error from Turkey and Wells, he's still full of energy, bounces in and grabs a massively important goal. What on earth do I do tactically here? Can these two drop back into midfield properly? They can. Right. Let's do proper football tactic stuff. Do structured. Liam Wells is completely isolated doing this. I might just... Should we do that? Because he wants to be a bit further forward. Just as a link up between the two. Or is that leaving a big gap here? Where our main weakness is at right back at the moment. That's probably a bad idea. Um, oh, this is a, a tactic. A four, proper 4-5-1. I have never ever used before. But we seem to have the players to be able to do it. Hunter makes a massively important save. Turkey is still playing this sweeper system at the moment. They don't seem to be panicking at all. And that in itself makes me panic a little bit. I want to see them mixing their tactic up and starting to get worried. Um, right, Wells is taking a free kick really deep. We're going to go defensive while he's doing that. 
and the cross comes in and Turkey clear, but hopefully they're not going to be able to break on us. Oh, I had to turn the camera off for a minute. Now it's back on again and I'm panicking even more. I did not want to have to do that. Wells is running free though and it goes out to Cook Simmons finally playing in his position for England. How? What just happened? Did Liam Wells just burst the net? That ball bounced around the screen as Liam Wells just kicked a football so hard that he has made the goal explode. Let's watch this in 3D. Liam Wells just broke the goal. And it's 4-2. It's his hat-trick. I have never seen anyone break the goal in Football Manager before. Liam Wells has just reached a new level of legendary status. And he's going for a fourth. He has been absolutely immense today. And we've not even noticed that Oscar has been on the pitch. Liam Wells has completely outshot him. Now Turkey are panicking with their system. Going back to the 4-2-3-1. It is too little, too late. And we're going to be in... I think it's the quarterfinal. It might even be the semi-final. I don't know how the Euros works. But most importantly, we've knocked Turkey out and we've eliminated one of the best players in the world from the Euros. Oscar, bye-bye now. Oh, that, that was important. That was awesome. I can't show you the draw or whatever it is for the next round because I can't show you that screen that shows you who we're managing. But by the magic of editing, we will move straight into the next match. Now, yeah, it was France, and France are strong favourites for the game. Liam Wells is top scorer in the tournament, but this might be his last opportunity to add to that tally. If we win, we play Belgium, which in theory should be an easier game, although I know some of these Belgian players from our time at um, Bayern Munich, and we know the likes of Toynis and I think Mikel's is Belgian as well, so... Not necessarily an easier game if we manage to navigate France. Scotland, by the way, have made, already made it through to the semi-final, knocking Switzerland out in their quarter-final. Um, yes, my players can adapt to any situation. We have had to make a couple of changes to the side um, at defence. Um, what's his face? Thompson is injured. And the other guy who normally plays that, Abraham, is absolutely shattered as is um, Chris Carter, who normally plays at left-back. So it's a completely different back four to the one that started in the last game. Colwell comes back in at right-back, but then we've got Mori Ellis, who is a Liverpool centre-back who's got 10 caps, 24 years old. I mean, he's decent, but not my first choice. And this is a big problem. Simon Clifton in at left-back, he's a Man City centre-back who doesn't play very often, and we're having to play him at left-back. Um, in the French team, is there anyone we recognise? There is not. That's a surprise. I thought we had some. There's Lafarge who we had at left back at Bayern Munich. But I would have expected some. I'm sure we've had some more French players in this. Let's get into the game anyway. I'm not feeling at all confident about this one. We have a very makeshift defence. I, I just don't know at this. I'm so inexperienced at international tournaments. I don't know if we were better off making the changes to the defence that we've made or if we would have been better off playing with tired defenders. I don't really know how everyone else's conditioning is going to be at this stage of an international tournament. There doesn't seem to be an option to rest players between games the way I normally would. We're 1-0 up. Forget all that nonsense. We're back in Sunderland again today, like we were for that first game against Scotland. Hopefully going to right some wrongs in front of the Sunderland faithful. Um, but that's a lovely ball forward from our captain, Colwell. Wells just squares it to Phillip, and there we go. We're 1-0 up. Lewis Phillip is having an excellent tournament for a player going into this. I think we said he was 29 years old. Going into this tournament, just had five caps, one goal. That's his third goal of the tournament. I think Wells trying to beat his man. Can't quite get past him. But hopefully we're going to build another attack in here. Sue's getting loads of space in that central midfield. I guess he's been made the extra man in there, which is weird. He plays his domestic football in France. They should know all about how good he is. But with a four-man midfield, it seems they're playing pretty wide with the wingers and just leaving us with an extra man in the centre of midfield all the time, which is absolutely fine by me. We want to be playing narrow. I don't care if they're running around the side of us. We, If we can dominate the centre of midfield, we'll win this match. Philip, oh, that forces an excellent save out the French keeper. And now we have a corner aside to take, and it's a bit scrappy. And we have another corner. We're really in control for this first 15 minutes or so. I know we can't keep this pace up the whole game. This is going to be another problem with tournament football and the way we play. It's very high-tempo, fast-paced stuff. 
with a really tired squad. And as the game goes on, France with their wider like, wider formation and lower tempo. I'm just pretending I know about tactics, but they're going to really come into it in the second half. Would be Kev's prediction. Hunter doesn't quite manage to make the save. And that's a massive problem because it's now 1-1 when we were talking about how we're going to dominate the first half and they're going to come back into it in the second. Well, if we go into half time not even winning... I don't see how we've got any chance at all. We don't have much in the way of backup firepower on the bench. It's really down to the the front three and Burgess to to be our goals. And as they tire, I don't know where more goals are going to come from. Our defence shouldn't tire as much because they're all pretty fresh. None of them have played a game of football in at least the last week. Most of them even longer than that. But they're inexperienced. Colwell aside, this is a back four that have never played together before. And that's that's a that's a problem in and of itself. Let's grab a goal just before half time, like we did in the last game. Wells is in. He does. Liam Wells makes it 2-1 just before half time. My camera's gonna celebrate by running out of battery. Hopefully we get through the 3D highlight before I have to swap swap batteries around. Does he break the net this time? He nearly does. He hits it so hard. That's awesome from Liam Wells. And now is a good time to swap my battery over. Ah, battery swapped. And it's half time. Um, I have no idea what to do tactically at this point. I'm glad we're being passionate about half time team talk. We're going to go out there still on control flexible for now. We know as soon as we start making our substitutions, bringing on those wide players that we tend to bring on later on in the match, um, that we can perhaps switch to something similar to what we used against Turkey later on in this game if we need to. Be careful with a backup tactic. Oh, this is this is all new. It's, I feel like I'm going to have a nosebleed. Mark Asai is not having a very good tournament. He's a he's the first substitution every time we play. He's just really struggling, but we don't have another option to play in that attacking midfielder position. It seems like the succession of managers who followed me at Tottenham haven't bothered trying to pl- train James Burgess to play there, which is a real shame because I think with the right training, he could be absolutely superb in that position. But then I guess they've got Oscar. They don't really need to train him to play just there. So I can kind of understand it. But as has been the way so far in this tournament, first substitution, we're going to bring Cook Simmons on for Osai and then if we got we can bring Chris Carter on actually at left back he's had a long enough rest we're going to we're going to drop to standard i don't want to get too defensive yet cuz i'm still terrified about those two players that we have playing at center back we know Jamie Murray was really poor against Scotland he seems to be having a better game today um and Dom Ellis i know nothing about i don't ever remember using him before ever um Right, Brad Godfrey is going to come off. Luca Breaker will come on. He's played there plenty of times throughout the tournament. Again, another player who is just really being rested or rotated today because I'm still not really sure who my best midfield three are. Now I think it's the time to go counter and structured. And France have pushed three players up front now. Uh, That I mean, I really should respond to that in some way, but I've got nothing. You've, You've met me before and I don't think we need a response. Because that's it. That was that was incredibly straightforward. Liam Wells is still top scorer in the competition with seven goals now. We're through into the semi-final. So fingers crossed on tomorrow's video. It will be a semi-final. And maybe a little final as well in there would be lovely. As part of the expedition of gold that we're all on. Again, can't show you anything further than this. Because I'm not going to tell you who I'm managing yet. Continue to speculate down in the comments. It's great fun. If you enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.